All right, we have some big news that is happening in the car market right now. Tesla just reported some of their sales numbers, and they are way less than expected. So um, I just want to show you this right here and talk to you about what it means for the car market. So um, when Tesla reports their sales, their deliveries, or whatever, they're, they're straight to consumer. So they can show a demand drop a lot sooner than a lot of these other manufacturers. And I want to talk about why, okay, this, this news right here, uh, it really affects, it's more than just Tesla. It's not just Tesla problem, uh, with these deliveries missing. And it's the, the biggest miss since, uh, um, and the biggest time they've had a, uh, a miss in earnings. I mean, not earnings, but in, uh, deliveries since 2020, we all know what happened there. Uh, but, uh, I really, this is a foreshadowing of what's coming to the car market and I'll, I'll tell you why. So, Tesla is is straight direct to consumer. If a consumer wants to buy a car, they're buying it directly from Tesla. The rest of the auto market, these automakers, they don't work like that. So how they work is that when whenever these OEMs are delivering um, these these cars to the 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 dealers, that's when they can create these sales. Um, and it's not when a customer actually buys these cars. So we've talked about this a lot, but that is why an OEM like Ford, GM, Stellantis, they can be doing good. They can be showing great profits. Uh, they can be showing great sales, but dealers can be suffering. And the reason why this news out of Tesla is a big foreshadow for the whole market is it's showing the demand crush on the consumer side, but you're not going to see it yet from the manufacturer side because it's got to hit the dealerships and then the dealerships have to start turning down these allocations and when they start turning down these allocations that's when your manufacturers get hit that is why this tesla news is so so big for the car market yeah yeah it might be that okay we have early adopters there we can take off some of uh some of the news for that uh yeah maybe there is a uh is a retreat from, from a lot of this EV demand more than the I side. But I really think the overall picture is showing that there is just a big demand drop from consumers overall because they can't buy these cars anymore. There's no money just floating out in the system anymore. Inflation is, uh, is taking its toll. People cannot buy cars right now. And Tesla, Tesla is screaming it. And pretty soon you're going to see it come from a lot of these manufacturers where, okay, yeah, they had some good sales. They had some good fleet sales. We're even seeing reports of, uh, of some of these fleet numbers drop now too. So you're going to have a demand crush on the consumer side. You're going to have a demand crush on these fleet sides. And when that happens, these, these, uh, these dealers, we're already hearing it from a lot of these franchise dealers. They're hurting right now. When they're hurting, when they have inventory stacking up, then they have to start to turn down these allocations. Recent, a recent, <laughs> I recently talked to a, uh, a GM from a Nissan dealership, and he's not sure what they're going to do. They went from having 60 new cars on the lot in just about a month and a half, a two-month span, to over 200 new vehicles and they can't sell them. They're stacking up everywhere. It's so bad at Nissan that we're seeing that Nissan is paying them on the front end, and they're paying on them on the back end. And what does that mean? That means that they're paying these Nissan dealerships money on top of every vehicle that they can take um, off the manufacturer's side, and then they're paying them on the back end for every vehicle that they can sell. So they're incentivizing these dealerships to take vehicles, and they're incentivizing dealerships to sell vehicles. It's bad. We haven't seen that in years. We we'll also have reports out of some of these manufacturers to, to they're telling these dealers to move some of these vehicles into their service loan fleet. And at that point, they can they can turn in these sales. And when those vehicles come out of the, the dealership inventory, then they can take more vehicles uh, from these manufacturers. It's a big term that uh, goes along with a lot of uh, what these manufacturers have done, what they've done for years, and it's called channel stuffing. And what they do is they find any little nook and cranny, any loophole to stuff a vehicle anywhere. Anytime they can get a vehicle from manufacturer, from board, from GM, from Stellantis into these dealerships inventory, they can count it as a sale. They've been able to do that for months now, even though these dealerships have been crying, but no longer. They're going to start seeing the same demand crush 
that uh, that Tesla is seeing. It's just that Tesla is going to see it before any of these manufacturers can see it because they deal directly with the consumer. They don't have to go through all the crap of dealing with uh, going through uh, these uh, these dealerships to be able to report sales. And as we know, these dealerships they were they didn't have any inventory, and then they got loaded up. Just like that. That's how fast it happened. It happened over just a few months where these dealerships are now stacked to the brim and they're not going to be able to take anything else. They're turning down allocations right now and you're going to start seeing it um, in the next few quarters uh, from the big three. Toyota, probably not yet. It's probably going to still be a while for Toyota, but we'll definitely see it with Nissan. Um, Honda is probably going to be a little bit with uh, with uh, Honda. Um, Subaru, we're starting to see uh, Subaru stack up. Uh, a lot of these European brands, they're, they're starting to stack up so um look for that in the in the coming uh in, in the, ne the next few quarters i'm expecting to see especially from a company like stellantis um in the next quarter they're probably going to we're going to start seeing cracks with them uh, now these i mean these these are there's uh, are smart companies they've got they've got people at the top i won't say all of them but they've got uh, some people at the top that know how to turn in good quarters. They know how to um, do the right things in accounting to uh, keep their margins up, but they're not going to be able to hide behind their margins uh, for uh, for much longer. The stock market's going to see through this. Um, so, all right, uh, I got one question here, and I want to tell you, please do not send us money. If you've got questions, put them in the chat. We'll uh, try to get to as many as possible. Please don't send us money. I really appreciate it, but uh, keep your money. Um, looking to buy a 2010 Sequoia with 174,000 miles from a local uh, dealer for $14,000. He refuses to send a Carfax or any other details. He is just being cheap or shady. Um, are Carfax reports that expensive? Uh, any other advice? So I would tell you that uh, if they're not going to provide you a Carfax, that's probably not a dealer that I'm going to deal with for one of two reasons. And I think you hit both of them. They're either cheap or they're shady. Carfaxes are not that expensive. So uh, we have Carfax with, um, with our dealership. And I think we pay, I want to say it's like $1,500 a month and I can run unlimited Carfaxes. That might sound like a lot of money. And it is $1,500 is a lot of money uh, to pay monthly, but for the amount of vehicles that we're moving, that we move through, I mean, we can sell anywhere from, I mean, 60, 70, all the way up to like 120 vehicles in a month uh, when we're really busy during tax season and stuff. It's not that much money in the grand scheme of things, and it protects us. And I would want every dealership to really have some kind of protection to know if they're selling a salvage vehicle, um, reconstructed, a theft, flood, anything like that. And Carfax is the way that we protect ourselves here at my dealership because the auctions that sell us cars, they run, they run checks too, but the auctions are usually pretty cheap. So they'll run like auto check and, um, those I don't think auto check is as good as Carfax for the amount of information that you're going to get. Now the dealerships can buy them individually if they don't do uh, mass volume uh, or a lot of volume like what, what, what we do. Um, and I, it's only like 30 or 40 bucks. So um, I would want that dealership to pay for that. That's not something that a consumer should have to pay for. Um, so either way, either way uh, they're, they're cheap. And if they're cheaping out on not being able to get a Carfax to you, um, for the vehicle, then uh, that means they're cutting quarters uh, somewhere else. Uh, so that's another uh, thing to think about. Um, and uh, it's it's really it's really not that much. And we run a Carfax on every single one of the cars that uh, that that we uh, buy. Um, and it could be a thing that maybe there's something on the Carfax that's going to make uh, you not want to buy that car. There's another thing too about uh, Carfax is whenever a dealer will print out a Carfax, a lot of times it'll give the value of what Carfax thinks the car should be. And uh, maybe that dealer is pricing that uh, Sequoia way higher than what the Carfax value is going to show. So if they give that to you and uh, you see that, okay, they're $5,000 over what uh, Carfax estimated that this, this car should be worth then that dealer knows that you're probably not going to buy it, or at least it gives you some negotiation power um, on the back end. So um, yeah, uh, that's, that's probably not a dealer I'm going to go buy a car from. It's a 2010 Sequoia. They made a lot of them. You can find another one. Um, it's got higher mileage. Uh, most of them are going to have higher mileage. You're paying uh, $14,000 for it. Um, not in love with the price. I don't think it's Terrible, terrible, terrible. I do think it's high. Um, uh, I think you should hopefully be around ten to twelve thousand dollars on that. Would be my guess. 
Uh, but uh, that, that's probably you're you're hitting the nail on the head. It's one of those uh, two problems um, that you're going to see. And uh, just just don't buy from them. There's other dealers. You don't have to buy from them. Um, hey, Brandon, uh, what can independent dealers do if they can't sell their cars on their lots and they can't sell them at auction? Do they keep them in their lots forever? Well, there's a problem. So most car dealers use a floor plan. A floor plan is like a credit card. So the longer that they keep their cars sitting on their lot, then the more interest they have to pay them. Uh, and the more that uh, the more that uh, they give time for car values to go down because we are in a downtrend right now. Um, so yeah, they need to sell those cars. They need to sell them right now. And then if they can't, what a lot of them do is what you're saying is they'll send them to auction and dump them. But we know that a lot of these dealers are underwater on the cars that they have for sale. So um, as the prices go down, so do the auction prices. And uh, they continue to go down every single day. Um, and that's more interest they're going to have to pay. And they're probably not going to take that big haircut that they're going to take at the auction. So at some point, what they'll do is they'll just have to dump them at the auction for whatever it brings. And then they'll have to pay that difference to their floor plan company. It's not a situation where they just keep the, the car forever. Now, if they don't have a floor plan, somebody like me, I don't have a floor plan. I don't use credit for, uh, for any of my purchases. Then yeah, that car can sit out there forever and, uh, and, uh, it's not eating anything. So I can hang on to it for a year and it doesn't matter to me. But, um, even in my situation, we don't like to keep stale inventory um, because that car is then going to be competing month after month after month with new inventory that I have coming in that I might make money on. Um, so uh, we'll we'll keep dropping our price, dropping our price, dropping our price um, until we find uh, the the right uh, the right buyer for that car. Uh, what we typically do is we'll mark something up. Say we buy a car for two thousand dollars, put a little money into it, whatever we got in it. Say twenty two fifty, whatever, because we got inspection, cleanup. Um, little repairs, whatever. Twenty two fifty is what we got in that car. We'll mark it up somewhere to around like thirty five hundred dollars. Try to sell it. Um, two weeks go by and we don't have any test drives. We don't have any calls. Um, we keep track of all that stuff. Um, the market's telling us that they don't want that car or it's too expensive. So what we do at that point is we'll drop it down to three thousand dollars. So we'll make about eight hundred bucks on it at that point. Um, and then uh, we go another two three weeks and it's still the market's telling us that that car is too expensive. We'll drop it down again, another $500. So uh, we're uh, almost uh, breaking even at, on that car at that point. Um, and then it goes another couple of weeks and we still don't have any hits on it. We'll drop it down another $500 to where we're losing money. I don't want that car sitting on my lot and I don't have a floor plan, but I still don't want to have stale inventory on my lot. So we are, uh, we are going to continue to lower prices until we find uh, that buyer that we need to um, send. And Greg, Greg. Don't send us money, please. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to acknowledge it. If you send us money, I'm not going to answer your question. There we go. That, no, that's probably that's not accurate. Okay. Uh, do you think the manufacturers will reduce the number of dealerships again, uh, like 2009 and 2010? I, I don't think it's it's not the manufacturer that's going to force these dealerships to uh, to 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 not have so many dealerships. I think there's going to be a lot of dealerships that just turn over. They they're either going to get sold. You see a lot of uh, acquisition that happens. Um, around this time, we've already seen a lot of dealerships change hands. And when times get tough, that's that's what happens. Uh, you have uh, a lot of m &A, You have a lot of um, dealerships that go under. Uh, we've already seen a lot of these, uh, uh, I'll say like the, the bigger buy here, pay here dealerships um, go under because of these bad loans, because uh, they gave people loans that they really shouldn't have. And uh, during this time where cars were harder to buy, especially on the used side, you saw a lot of them suffer. So uh, I think it was American, uh, what was it? American Car Center, something something like that. I, somebody put it down in the chat what what the name of uh, those were. I think that was uh, in the middle of last year that they went under. But you're going to see a lot of those uh, types of dealerships uh, go under that write their own loans, repos, delinquencies, spiking. And that's how a lot of them make their money. They don't necessarily make a ton of money on the car. Um, because they end up repo in a lot of the cars. They make a lot of money on the loans that they're writing. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, here's one. I am buying my, uh, I'm looking on buying my first used car tomorrow. I am uh, looking at a Mazda 6 with 50,000 miles. Are Mazda's reliable? Yeah, yeah, I like Mazda's. I like Mazda 6's. I like, um, 
I like that it only has fifty thousand miles. Um, I, I don't I don't mind a Mazda at all. We uh, we we sell them a lot. We buy them a lot. We see them a lot with. 150, 200,000 miles. Um, that's the kind of cars that we buy and, uh, we're, we're able to sell them and they're, they're uh, good cars. So, um, those Toyotas, Hondas, any of those, I'm, uh, I'm not worried about you buying at all. Uh, you want to stay away from CVT transmissions if you're looking used, but that one, that one's, you don't have to worry about with that one. Um, to, 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 Let's see here. If you got any more questions, throw them in the chat. We got a few more minutes. We can answer some more. Um, looking to buy a 2023 new F-150. Uh, we are four months deep into a 2024. And why do they insist on not discounting them anymore? Your opinion. So uh, the problem with a lot of these Ford dealers is that they're not really able to do any deep discounts. Um, so. I don't know if you've poked and uh, scratched at any of these sales managers or anything, but um, you're going to have to ask. So if you're just window shopping, whatever, you're not going to see any discounts. Um, and a lot of that comes from the manufacturer side. Uh, I recently talked to a Nissan uh, franchise manager I mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, there's some vehicles out there that he wants to get off his floor plan. And he would even it seemed like uh, sell them for under invoice, uh, but he can't market them at that. He can only market down to invoice. And this comes down from the manufacturer, what he's allowed to do, what he's not. So if he wants to do a huge sale and, and move a bunch of vehicles, um, he's got to put on his vehicle, not the price he would sell it for, but okay, close out sale or manager special, whatever. Um, and then when the customer comes to them, then they can tell them the price, but they can't advertise it online. Uh, they can't advertise it even on their windshields um, at their dealership. And that comes directly from the manufacturer, allowing them to do certain things, not allowing them to do certain things, not allowing them to price it um, at the the amount that they want to price it for. Um so um, hopefully that's what you're seeing, and uh, you're if, when you go inside and you actually go and uh, poke at these uh, at these dealerships with the F-150s, then you can get a discount. You should be on a 2023 F-150. You should be able to get at least 10% off, probably 15%. And at that point, it's still too expensive. I don't want you to buy a new car right now because I mean the market's getting worse. Tesla is screaming it. I mean, I know not everybody is a Tesla, bu a Tesla buyer, and I know that not everyone is uh, even in the EV market or whatever, but um, Tesla is, uh, is a good guideline to be able to show that uh, the demand for just vehicles in general for what people can purchase is going down, and it's going to hit these manufacturers pretty soon, and they're going to start putting out more incentives. So I would rather you wait for a bigger incentive, um, a better interest rate, I don't want you to borrow money on a car. I would rather you um, pay cash for something. But if you are one to to finance a car, um, then special interest rates are coming. Incentives, more incentives are coming. No one's buying cars right now. They're, these these dealerships, they're 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 not selling a lot of vehicles. Yeah, I mean they're still taking deliveries of cars, but that that's going to stop. It's going to stop pretty soon. Um, all right. Pull up this one. Uh, what is the average dealer markup on cars purchased uh, from an auction? It, it's all over the place. So I can tell you what we do. Um, but what we do is not similar to what a lot of other dealers do. So whenever we buy a car, I'll give that example again of a, of a $2,000 car. Um, if we don't have to put any money into it and we're in it around $2,100, uh, $2,200 after fees and everything like that, we would typically mark it up somewhere around the $1,500 range, but I like round numbers. So we're not going to mark it up to $3,700. We're probably going to pull it back to $3,500. So that is what our typical markup is. And you really can't use percentages um, when you're looking at our cars, um, new car dealers, you can, they can work off profit margin and the, the percentages, but it doesn't, it doesn't work with, with cheaper cars. Uh, cause, um, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you still got to pay your bills. And if you're only making uh, 10% <laughs> from what you bought, it, it's not going to, it's not going to buy you anything. It's not going to pay any of the bills. Uh, there's no, I mean, there, there'll be no profit left over. Um, so it's, it's, uh, as I've heard of some dealers that they'll tell me, they don't know how I operate. Uh, and I just tell them it's volume. You just got to sell a lot of cars. Um, but I make a lot less than what most dealers will make on their cars. There's, uh, they've told me that they can't, they can't even break even at like $2,000. So they've got to sell a car and make three, 3,000, 3,500 bucks. And this is on like a seven to $10,000 car. So I think that's uh, overboard, but what they 
have to do is, I mean, they got bills to pay. They got floor plans to pay. So they factor that into all of their, uh, all of their, uh, all of their overhead, all this stuff, um, costs tons and tons and tons of money. Um, so, uh, you have to factor that in the nicer, the facility that you're going to, to buy a car from the more money they're going to make per car because the higher their expenses are. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be all over the place, but you know what, uh, what we do at this point. Um, and, uh, BRG one is I hope Brandon can still do interviews. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're asking if I can be interviewed by someone or if someone can interview me. Um, probably if, uh, if I can interview someone because the, the GM from Nissan told me a lot. And, uh, the reason why, um, he's able to do that is because he's got a good owner. The owner's great. The, the owner actually, I think, uh, he was telling me watches a lot of our videos and, and enjoys them. Uh, but they like, they like being transparent and guess what? They can sell more cars because of that. They got uh, a lot of people looking up their, their website and uh, coming to their dealership just by being in some of our videos and me pointing that out. Uh, so other dealers that are out there, if you watch this, hit me up. I would love to interview you. I'll come there. You can come here, whatever. Um, I will, uh, I would love to have more interviews on my channel. So email me. Um, we got another interview coming up, uh, this Friday with, uh, Michael Bordenero. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the housing market. So hopefully that will, uh, that will be a fun, uh, fun interview for you guys. But, uh, um, I want to thank you for watching this today. Um, please subscribe to this channel, uh, hit the like button, and I hope you have a great uh, rest of your day.